Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Al Brady and today we are making tomato dashi. I don't know if you can hear this, but I've got everything going on here. I live next to a train station, some sort of rifle range, the dog's up, the baby's sleeping, uh, the washing machine's on, so if there's loads of background noise. I apologise, we'll try and get through this as quickly as possible. Welcome back to the channel. You happen to stumble upon my what seems to be annual upload. It would uh, seem that I am terrible at uploading at any sort of regular schedule. Um, but it's what it is. I enjoy filming and I enjoy cooking. So I do it when I can, when I can fit it in. But I'd like to thank all the people that are still subscribing, even though I am less than reliable. Uh, so yeah, thanks for the support. I can't thank you enough. Anyway, today we are doing tomato dashi. Now it's going back, I had something, I was out with some friends the other day and I had some tomato consomme and you know, meh, it was okay, it wasn't great. Seems to be lacking any sort of depth of flavor. Not super impressive, but obviously you're out with friends, so you have to go, mm, yeah, it's delicious, it's great. Uh, yeah, that's oh, the best one I've ever had. But I came across something the other day, this amazing sort of uh, cultured rice seasoning, I guess is the best way to describe it, or condiment, um, called uh, shiokoji. I think I'm pronouncing that right. If I'm not, I apologize. Uh, but it's almost like this sort of gluten-free, clear soy sauce uh, made from sort of cultured koji rice, and it is fantastic. And I, once I had this thing, I thought back to my tomato consomme, and I thought it would be amazing together. So I've uh, taken the tomato consomme, and I've sort of used that base to create this sort of um, tomato dashi. Anyway, enough chit chat about how we actually got to this point. Let's talk about the recipe itself. So for the tomato consomme, what you're going to do is you're going to get a whole bunch of different tomatoes. I've used some heritage, some jewels, some plum. I'll leave a list of the ingredients in the description down below and a link to the full recipe on my website as well if you're interested. So once you've got all your ingredients, roughly chop them up. Any big tomatoes, um, you know, the peppers, the spring onions, you can get those all chopped up. Any little baby tomatoes, you can just leave those whole. So we're gonna put all those ingredients into the bowl of the food processor and we're just gonna blend them down until they are nice and smooth and all those tomatoes are broken down and almost like a puree. Then once they're all broken down, you're gonna pour that tomato mixture into a non-metallic bowl. So just so there's no reaction, otherwise it can sometimes take on a sort of metallic taste or a bitter taste, so a glass bowl is perfect for this. Then cover it and leave it to marinate anything from 12 to 24 hours. I mean, if you're in a rush, you can probably go with it straight away, um, but if you want extra flavor, then leave it for at least 12 hours in the fridge so all those flavors can marinate together. Once the mixture is finished marinating, you put a colander over another non-metallic bowl, a glass one will do just fine, and then you're gonna line it with a muslin cloth. Then you're gonna take that marinated mixture and pour it into that muslin lined colander. Now there's two ways you can go about this uh, in terms of draining your consomme. You can tie up your little bag and hang it. So, I mean, if you don't have a walk-in fridge like most of us, then hanging it in the fridge for 12 hours or so is not really gonna be an option for you. Then what you can actually do is you can just make sure you tie that bag together and then gently press it just by putting a heavy pan or something like that on top of it. I usually use sort of two heavy cast iron pans to gently squeeze out the clear juices. What you don't wanna do is push any of the sort of pulp or puree through that muslin, so it has to be gentle. Don't try and wring it out with your hands, otherwise your consomme won't be nice and clear. This should take about six hours or so, but I mean, you know, you just keep an eye on it. Once the uh, mixture inside the muslin looks pretty dry, you're pretty much good to go. Then transfer the consomme into something a little bit more sensible to store in your fridge, and that's it. Tomato consomme, done. Really easy, just blend tomatoes, marinate them, and then press them or hang them, and allow the juices to drain through. And this is gonna be the base for our dashi. Now for the dashi, you're gonna measure out 250 grams of that tomato consomme, and you're gonna put it into a pan along with a little bit of kombu. So kombu is like this dried seaweed used in Japanese cuisine, and basically the base for almost all your dashis. I mean, you get a whole bunch of different dashis, but this one is really, really simple. It just adds that sort of rounded umami flavor to our dashi. Leave the kombu to soak for about 30 minutes or so in that tomato consomme until it's well hydrated and softened. So after 30 minutes, you can put that pan onto the heat and gently warm it through until it's just steaming. No simmering, no boiling. It makes your kombu all slimy. It's not really what you want. You just want to gently, gently steep that seaweed. Once this mixture is steaming away, you can add your katsubushi. And this is basically your bonito flakes. Really, really thinly sliced 
pieces of um, bonito, which is like a dried and fermented fish. And it has this sort of incredible salty umami hit to your consomme. So once the katsubushi is in, try not to boil this mixture. We just want to gently, gently steam it or gently, gently steep it. So for about 15 minutes over a very gentle heat, just to extract as much flavor as possible, but while keeping the liquid as clear as we can. So gentle, gentle cooking. After 15 minutes, you can pass this dashi. I just passed it through a very fine J cloth, but if you want, you can use a muslin again as well, but a J cloth will usually do the job. So this would be our official base of our dashi, but to finish it off and give it a little bit of balance, I've added a little bit of rice wine vinegar, a little bit of mirin and our shio koji. This is gonna give us that really huge umami hit. Um, it's absolutely fantastic, this stuff. And that's it, that's basically all it takes to make our little tomato dashi. We're gonna finish this off by serving it with a few little baby tomatoes, compressed melon balls, some cucumber, some pickled daikon, um, a few edible flowers, because I'm feeling fancy. Then we just split the dashi with a little bit of tarragon and dill oil, and then serve that little beauty up. So I've picked my herbs. I'm actually using some tweezers here, to my shame. Uh, I use, uh, my job at the moment has got me working in plenty of different restaurants, uh, and I had to do some herb picking with some tweezers, which I always thought was a bit of a chefy bullshit. But <laughs> I have to say, after picking herbs for a couple of days with tweezers, I actually felt like I was doing something really important. Um, as stupid as it sounds, I really enjoyed it. So I actually uh, bought myself some tweezers and I am now <laughs> picking herbs with the tweezers for this video and plating up with them. So I apologize if you think it's a little bit excessive, but I thought it was fun. So, you know, screw you. And that's it, that's it, that's it. That's all you need to do for your little tomato dashi. It looks really pretty. I mean, and the edible flowers, it's absolutely up to you, not completely necessary, but in terms of making a dish look a little bit more refined, I think they work really, really nicely. And they all sort of complement this dish quite nicely as well, especially if you get one slightly more fragrant, just to balance out the sort of fragrances from the, uh, the shiokoji and the uh, tomato dashi. I'm not gonna apologize for it. It's just uh, yeah, it's a pretty little dish and I like it. So if you like this video and you like this recipe, let me know by hitting that like button down below. And if you're new here and you like what you see and you don't mind watching a video once every four years, then please feel free to subscribe. That's it from me. I'm gonna go and uh, you know, do something else quickly before the baby wakes up. Um, we haven't had too much disturbances throughout this, so I'm very, very pleased. I'll see you next time, maybe next year. 2020. Woohoo!